Application Menu Like any other software, the best way to start learning Civil 3D is to first familiarize ourselves with the user interface. That's the working environment, where the tools and needed commands are located. Let's open a file and explore the Civil 3D interface. In the top left corner, click on the Open command to browse to the 02.01 interface DWG file in Lesson 2 Practice folder. In the new window, make sure you have selected a DWG file format. Then select the O2 interface file and click on Open. The drawing opens. We see the proposed Flower Village Townhouse subdivision, which is the project we will work on throughout this training. We will try to design it from field to finish. We will see all the necessary steps from the moment we received field survey data to the creation of the final field stakeout. This process will involve organizing and adjusting survey data, creating road alignments and profiles, site grading, designing utilities, stormwater management, estimating volumes, and much more. Now let's explore some components of the Civil 3D interface. First up, the application menu. It is in the top left corner and is represented by the Autodesk Civil 3D logo. Once you click on it, you'll notice that you have more options. We are going to explore a few of them. Most of the items on the application menu are similar to the AutoCAD application menu. So for more details, please refer to the AutoCAD course. We will talk about these commands here, but not in as many details, because they are mostly basic AutoCAD commands. We have the new command at the top. Click the arrow to the right to expand it for more options. From there, we can either create a new drawing or sheet set. A sheet set is a drawing file specifically created to manage sheets for printing. Before going further, let's note that we will be using the terms plotting, printing, and even publishing interchangeably. They originally meant different things, but the demarcation line between them is becoming finer. The more we move to the electronic age of things, but that's a discussion for another day. For now, all three terms mean creating an output file for sharing with others. Click on Drawing. A new window opens. Here, be careful of what type of file you choose to create. Most of the time, we are creating two types of files. A DWG file, which is a standard Civil 3D file, or a DWT file, which is a Civil 3D template file. We will ignore the third type, the DWS, for now. The DWT is a template file, which means that it contains standards and settings commonly used, such as unit formats and precisions, title blocks and borders, styles and label settings, and much more. It's always recommended to start a new drawing from a template to make it much easier, because you have a lot of parameters already set up in previous jobs, and you don't need to recreate them. On the other end, you can choose to create a new DWG file if you only need to create a quick drawing and you are not much interested in the setup, or if you have already specified a default template in Civil 3D. In that case, Civil 3D opens your template by default. We will see later how to create a default template. For the time being, let's cancel and return to the application menu. The next line in the application menu list is the open command. Let's expand it by hovering over. A scrolling menu shows up with options such as Drawing to open a pre-existing drawing that has been worked on already, not from a template. Drawing from Cloud to open a drawing stored on the Internet. Sheet Set to open a printing setup file. Additional formats such as DGN and IFC files. Next, on the Application menu, we can save the current drawing in the default DWG format or we can use Save As to choose a different file format or name. For instance, we can Save As under a standard Civil 3D desktop file or a mobile-friendly drawing format, a drawing template, the standard DWT format we talked about earlier, a drawing standard file, other formats such as DXF. We can even save a layout as a completely separate AutoCAD file. How great is that? For example, we can create a file for only our grading or drainage sheet layout. We can do that and send it to whoever is requesting it. We can also export a Civil 3D drawing to different formats, such as PDF or DWF. A DWF is essentially the Autodesk PDF equivalent. 
It's also very convenient, as you can open a DWF file on most modern desktops without installing any specific software. Next, we can publish. In Civil 3D, publishing is simply printing for the purpose of sharing electronically. To publish a drawing, we have multiple options. Among the different forms of publishing, one that we need to mention is the e-transmit option. This method is highly recommended. It makes sure all files related to the current drawing, such as external reference files, fonts, and plot styles, are embedded in the published package. In the print section, we can perform various printing-related tasks. We will talk more about them in the output chapter. Next are the drawing utilities, where we can set various properties and parameters for the current drawing. Once again, refer to the AutoCAD Essentials course for more details on how to use these settings. For now, just know that you can make operations such as consulting the drawings properties and statistics, accessing the Civil 3D settings, which we can also do from the tool space, which we will talk about in a minute, setting the drawing units, auditing and recovering the drawings to fix corrupted files, displaying the file status for more statistical information, and performing a purge, a typical AutoCAD operation to get rid of unused drawing objects. We can also close the current or all open drawings and exit Civil 3D. One more thing we can do from the application menu is to access the current drawing's global options. The options window is where most of the drawing's underground preferences and settings are stored. Among the choices we have, the file tab, where we can find all the information for Civil 3D support file locations, including paths for program drivers, menus, and other files. On this tab, we also have user-defined settings, such as default templates and temporary saved files. For instance, we can come in here and specify where to store our automatic save files. We can also specify the default template to use when we create a new drawing. We currently haven't specified one. If we haven't set a default template, Civil 3D will prompt us to choose one every time we try to create a new drawing. Let's change that and specify which template to use by default every time we hit the New Drawing button, or type Q New at the command line. Once we hit Browse, we are automatically directed to the default folder containing all Civil 3D templates. Choose a default template file, metric or imperial setup, depending on your geographic location or jurisdictional requirements. If you don't have a template set up for your organization, the default Civil 3D templates are a good place to start. You should, however, improve them. Organizations such as Infratech Civil can help you set up your own standards or provide you with improved pre-made ones. Most of our designs will be in metric or imperial units. We then need to choose the default template provided out of the box by Civil 3D or choose our own if we have created one. A default template is now set and will be used each time we hit the Q new command on the ribbon or enter it at the command line. Don't forget to cancel when exiting this window if you do not want to change any settings during this training. Let's go to the application menu. Don't forget that. That is how we got here. There are also other ways to access the options windows and the application menu is just one of them. At the top right, we have two icons. The first, the white icon to the left, allows us to display the recently opened files, stored in chronological order. We can pin files if we want them to be always displayed in this list, just like we did on the Start window. We can also sort files by list, access date, size, or type. To the right, we have an option to display only currently opened files. We see on the list the two files that are currently opened. Once again, we have an option to change the display mode to list, small or large icons. Lastly, from the application menu at the top right, we have the search commands text box, where we can perform specific searches. For example, let's say we want to design an alignment. By just typing align in this box, we have a whole list of suggestions related to the word align. Look at the list of commands below. We can create alignments using all kinds of methods. Let's try the word rectangle. By simply typing that word, we have a suggestion to run the rectangle command from the ribbon and many other options. If we click on it, we can come to the drawing area and simply click the start and end point and draw a rectangle. 
So these are actual commands we can run, not just an information help menu. The search commands box is very useful when we are looking around for commands that we don't know or don't recall. Select the polyline that we have just created and erase it using delete from your keyboard. That concludes the section on the application menu. Next up, the ribbon.